Hi, it's Ariel with Auto City in El Cajon, San Diego's award-winning used car dealership. Behind me is a 2016 Acura TLX in gray with a gray stone leather interior. This car has about 35,000 miles on it. This video is going to be sort of a follow-up to another video I posted about a week or two ago about an Acura MDX midsize crossover SUV wherein I got a little retrospective about Acura as a brand and how they used to be cool. More specifically, I compared that car to my dad's old 1988 Acura Legend Coupe and I'm starting to think that maybe it wasn't a fair comparison. Yes, they were the same brand of car, but they're 30 years apart. One was a sports luxury coupe the other a mid-size crossover SUV. So here we have the TLX mid-size sedan, and even though, again, it's not the same as a sports luxury coupe, they are about 30 years apart, I still think it might be at least somewhat of a closer comparison. This is gonna be rather a short video. It's gonna be mostly about the way this car drives because there's a lot of similarities between this and the MDX as far as the amenities and the luxuries and the way it looks and all that stuff. It's just in a mid-size sedan body style. So let's do, let's do the video. Let's do it. Okay. All right. Okay, we're on. We are on today. We are on. We're, let's do this. Woo this TLX is powered by a 2.4 liter transverse four cylinder engine. When mated to an eight speed shiftable automatic transmission delivers 206 horsepower, 182 pound feet of torque, and achieves 35 miles to the gallon highway. It should be noted that this model year 2015 TLX, not 2016, I messed that up in the intro, this model year was also offered with an available 3.5 liter V6, which managed 290 horsepower, and was probably the same engine that was in last week's MDX. But we get what we get. Besides, this little four-banger employs Honda's famous VTEC. Now, I'm no VTEC expert, but if you'd like to learn more than I can teach you about VTEC, click the Donut Media video I linked in the upper right corner. After you finish this one, and while you're at it, you can hit the subscribe button down there somewhere. You think I'm not serious about that subscribe button? Back to the TLX. Now that MDX from last week was a big old lugging SUV, and this is a lower to the ground sedan car. My personal preference. So let's hit the road. Oh, okay. It's not a bad car. It's not a bad car at all. Okay, so it, it has a very similar, remember when I, I said the MDX has a nice accelerative pull to it? This car does too. Oddly enough, the MDX had a V6, and this just has a transverse uh, inline four cylinder. It actually does drive pretty dang nice. It's not a sports car. It's, it's still not a sports car, but that accelerative pull, as I keep calling it, is confident. It's also uh, rather smooth and quiet, not as smooth and quiet as other luxury cars, but it's still, like I described it as, moderate luxury and you can feel that in the way this car drives. It's quick, it's smooth, it's confident, it's nice to drive, but it's also just sort of pleasant. It's slightly above average and um, I don't hate it. Okay, now this must be my drive settings button. It says IDS. Well, I have no ideas what that actually stands for. I'm going to go ahead and guess it's something like intelligent drive settings. Nope. It stands for Integrated Dynamics System. Okay, so right now we're in Econ, and let's turn this corner in Econ and see how much power we lose as a result of being in Econ. Econ Spangler. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the pickup is a lot less significant. Okay, Econ does make a big difference, but you know, Econ and economical modes do help when, you know, gas prices go through the roof, which they've done lately. And uh, as fun as it is to drive fast, sometimes it's fun to do what they call, we're going into a tunnel. As fun as it is to drive fast, sometimes it's fun to do what they call hypermiling, which is seeing 
how much you can get out of your gas tank. Okay, it's not fun, but sometimes you just have to do it. So you do have an econ mode for that. Let's put it into normal and see how much. Okay, normal feels like normal. Yeah, it feels like a normal four-cylinder car. It's fine. It's 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 not no no better or worse than any other four-cylinder car. I'm gonna recline my seat a little bit. Something interesting about this seat, the, the backing of this seat is very comfortable. It's really cush and, and contours nicely to my body. But the um, this part of the seat, the uh, the ass part, is is really stiff and also feels kind of small. You can see here that there's no contour and it's very much like a uh, like a like a desk from school which doesn't bring back happy memories for me. It's almost as if the seats were an afterthought and Acura just went through Honda's parts bin putting together whatever seats they could find. The leather is really nicely tanned though. Uh, so again, the, the backing is super comf. The uh, ass part, less so. Can you see me okay? I, I'm my own cameraman. I, I never know if I'm getting the angles right. The interior of this TLX is so similar in layout to the MDX, it's almost not worth mentioning. It still has two touch screens, same instrument cluster, same steering wheel, everything. Nice big center console, though not as big as the MDX, but there you go. The one thing I do want to point out, because I was all butthurt about the MDX not having a real uh, shift lever, even in an automatic transmission, but having a, a pedal for an e-brake release. It's the opposite in this car. This does have a mechanical automatic shift lever here, but it does actually have the electronic parking brake that you see in so many cars these days, especially by Honda. Not only that, it also has the coveted brake hold button, which I love because you can hit that brake hold button and sit in traffic or sit on a hill without having your foot having to rest on the brake in an automatic transmission car. It's a, it's a nice feature. It's just interesting pointing out that I guess it all depends on trim level and things like that and model of car that I guess some Acuras do have the electronic parking brake. Of course, any self-respecting driving enthusiast still prefers a handle, but there you go. Putting the car into sport mode. Okay, sport mode is e even just turning a corner at, at 15 miles an hour, you can already feel how much of a difference it actually makes. Just like the MDX, the steering tightens up. You could feel that it's done by computers and things like that, but um, the gears rev higher a little bit. It pulls a little harder, even getting up to 20 miles an hour, which uh, that, uh, that's, um, uh, oh, I'm actually going 35. Okay, some automotive journalist I turned out to be. Johnson Avenue, good, here we are, back home. Let's turn the corner and see what this puppy can do. Let's go to Sport Plus, Sport Plus, Sport Plus. I don't know what the difference is. In BMW, Sport Plus is just sport mode with the traction control turned off. I'm assuming it's something similar in this car and it really pulls nicely. The car revved all the way up to five and a half thousand RPM, just getting up to 40 miles an hour. So it, it really is sporty. Is that VTEC? Somebody give me the answer about VTEC. I don't know anything about VTEC. I need to look, that's a dead end. I need to learn about VTEC. Look, it's been a really, really long time since I've been inside that 1988 Acura Legend Coupe. It was a 24 valve V6 engine with a five speed manual transmission. And I never drove it. I only ride it, rode? I only rode in it. So again, this is still an unfair comparison, albeit a better comparison uh, than the MDX. And it's still apparent that Acuras are not cool anymore and they lost whatever identity they used to have, but it's still a nice car. Okay, well, this has been fun. This video has been brought to you by I Have Nothing Else to Film Today. After having driven two Acuras in two weeks, I can safely say that neither compare to the cool factor and memorability of their predecessors. And maybe the problem with Acura is that it's at the nucleus of all the corporate branding dullness that tarnishes the modern auto industry. Still, I like the cars. Once you get in and drive them, they're just fine. It may still be unfair to compare this car to a car 28 years its senior that was smaller with a V6 and a manual transmission, but I did get a good idea for how this car drives and feels, and I gotta say, I'm not disappointed. Does that do it for you? If you'd like to come take a look at this car or any other cars we have in our award-winning lot, 
Come see us in El Cajon or check us out online at GoAutoCity.com. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Keep driving. Auto City. It's got a good sound system, though. I really like the sound system. I'm not a big fan of too much bass or treble, for that matter. I'm all about that middle. I just ran over a baby shoe, and it made a thud, and it kind of gave me the creeps. <laughs>